Good morning. We bring you greetings from the Greater Second Missionary Baptist Church, 810 Charlotteford Road, Chattanooga, Tennessee. We pray that the Lord has continued to be gracious unto you and that all is well with you and your family. By way of announcements, we want to make you aware of the COVID testing that will be taking place. Uh, COVID testing will uh, conclude this week in the month of June, uh, Monday and Tuesday, uh, Brainerd High School on Tuesday and Monday, uh, and then also at the Archinob Elementary School on Monday and Tuesday. Keep in mind the start times at 7 a.m. They begin at 7 a.m. and they will conclude at 11 a.m. Uh, so testing at uh, Brainerd High School and at Orchard Knob Elementary. Testing today at the Greater Tucker Missionary Baptist Church, Moore Road. The testing will begin at 12 uh, p.m. and will conclude at 3 p.m. That is the Greater Tucker Missionary Baptist Church on Moore Road. The City of Chattanooga will be qualifying individuals for utility and rent assistance. For more information, to see if you qualify, uh, call 423-643-7322. 643-7322. That's the city of Chattanooga. Absentee balloting. If you are in need of an absentee ballot, you can go online to the uh, uh, the uh, the address that is presented to you uh, on the screen, or you can call the uh, Hamilton County Election Commission at air code 423-493-5100. I want to again encourage you to support the church financially. Remember, uh, you can easily bring your gift by the church today between 11.30 and 1.30 at 810 Charlotteford Road, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and drop your gift off. Or you can, uh, to have it picked up, you can call the church at 629-624-48, or you can call 423-595-2697, and someone will be happy to come and get your offering from you today. Uh, I want to also encourage you, if you... Uh, uh, are able to use PayPal to make your payment, please check the appropriate box to avoid the fee uh, that is charged to the church. Uh, make sure you check the personal contribution giving, or you can uh, uh, mail your gift to 810 Charlotte Road, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37411. That's the Greater Second Missionary Baptist Church. If you're coming by today to the membership uh, uh, and you are making a payment, or if you want to participate in Holy Communion on next Sunday, the communion kits are available to you here at the church. Just simply come by and pick one up, and uh, you'll be ready for uh, next week. All right, with that said, there is a word from the Lord, and we are in desperate need of that word in the times in which we are living today, uh, we are seeing things that we never thought that we would see, and we are in desperate need of the Lord's help. I'm going to simply read to you verse 6 of the 23rd Psalm. Verse 6 of the 23rd Psalm, which simply says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I thought for today, and it is the final installment of a series that we began a couple of weeks ago, The Shepherd. The Shepherd. Let us pray. Father, open our eyes now that we can see, our ears that we can hear, and our hearts that we might be able to receive what your word has to say to us today. You are our divine shepherd, and because you are, we know that we have a future 
that cannot be taken away from us, a future that we can rejoice in. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Amen, amen, and amen. The shepherd. Beloved Muhammad Ali was a remarkable athlete perhaps the greatest boxer of all time. But his mouth was just as extraordinary as his athletic prowess. Ali would not only predict or predict victory, but he would predict the round in which victory would come. Oddly enough, many times his predictions came true. To Ali, to Ali his boasting was nothing more than a celebration of the future. Most called him cocky. Ali called it confidence. Predicting victory is like predicting the future. It's almost impossible. Unless you have some evidence upon which to make the prediction, you're just whistling past the graveyard. But if you have evidence that victory is attainable, then celebrating the future is not such a far-fetched idea. At least that's the point of Psalm 23, verse 6. From David's point of view, Psalm 23, verse 6 is a celebration of the future. Thus far, Psalm 23 has presented David's exclamation, David's expectations, and now we come to his exaltation. Now, exaltation means to be joyous, blissful, exuberant. Listen to David's exaltation in verse 6 of Psalm 23. It says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, notice the word surely. Surely means confidence. Surely means certainty. Surely means there ain't no doubt about it. Surely means it's going to happen. Surely. Well, what is he so certain about? David was certain about his future. No matter what would come, no matter the challenges, no matter the hardships, no matter what the devil tried to do, David was confident that he was going to come out victorious, that he was going to be all right. So he exuberantly, joyously, blissfully, confidently celebrates his future. Well, preacher, what made him so confidently excited about his future? Two things. One is, he believed that if I do right, right will follow after him. He also sa said, and he believed this, that there was nothing that would separate him from his shepherd. Those two things. Do right, and right will follow after you. And nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the shepherd. Let's look at the first point where he believes that if we do right, right will follow us. You know, my mama taught me this, this concept many years ago. She would always say to me, Steve, do right and right will follow after you. And then she would say at the end of that, I mean that thing. Yeah, she meant it. And David agreed with my mama when he said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You see, David was saying, saying, we do right when we follow our shepherd. And by so doing, we will live in the favor of God. Jesus, our New Testament shepherd, said something similar to this when he said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The apostle Paul joined in the chorus when he said, whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. If we sow good seed, we will reap a good harvest. 
Now, this biblical principle does not mean that we will not struggle. It does not mean that we will not be challenged. It does not mean that we will not suffer from time to time. But if we sow peace, we will find it. If we sow kindness, we will find it. If we sow love, love will find us. Conversely, if you sow hate, you will be hated. If you sow deceit, you will be deceived. If you sow chaos, confusion will be your companion. When I look at this country, I see some disturbing things. I see a nation that has sown some bad seed. Yes, it has sown some good seed, but the good seed will not negate the bad seed, especially if we are continuing to sow the bad seed. America has sown bad seed and continues to sow bad seed by refusing to address its bigotry, its inequality, its corruption with the, with the Department of Justice that shows favoritism to the president's cronies, to the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department that conveniently loses vital video footage, and to a Treasury Department that gives billions of dollars to corporations and refuse to tell us who they gave it to. A nation that oppresses the least of these. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We are beginning to reap what we have sown as a nation. We have a virus that has brought us to our knees. We have an economy that is in shambles. Our racial bigotry is exposed like a gaping, festering wound. America the Great has become a disgrace. Our enemies are laughing at us. Our allies pity us and wonder how the mighty have fallen. And some believe it will stay that way until this nation does right by what it has done to the poor and people of color. Nicole Hannah-Jones has written an article in the New York Times Magazine entitled what is old? In the article, she argues, if true justice and equality are ever to be achieved in the United States, the country must finally take seriously what it owes black Americans. This nation must do right and not merely what is convenient. It must stop telling black to get back. It's time for white to do right. And until this nation does right by everyone, right will elude us. But if we do right, right will follow us. And that's all that David was saying. Do right and right will follow. And that's one of the reasons why he was so supremely confident about his future. Another reason David was so supremely confident in his future was that surely nothing will separate me from the shepherd. Nothing will separate me from the shepherd. The remainder of verse 6 says, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long, David? Forever. Forever. David knew something about losing a house that he dwelt in because he experienced being driven from one. He had experienced an unfortunate encounter, you see, with his friend and mentor, King Saul, a man David loved and respected. Saul brought David into the house of the king where he served Saul daily by fighting in his army and providing music that comforted the king when his demons rage within him. But the relationship soured when Saul's demons and his jealousy towards David got the best of him and sent him into a psychotic rage, 
a rage that caused Saul to hoist a spear at David in an effort to pin him to the wall. Fortunately, David's perception and his athleticism enabled him to dodge the spear and escape Saul's wrath. But the situation between David and King Saul only grew worse. So much so that David had to flee from the king's palace and live as a fugitive hiding in the mountains of Palestine. So David knew what it felt like to be driven from a house and to be separated from a home. Perhaps this is what David had in mind here in this verse. He uses the experience of being driven from Saul's palace, Saul's house, to make a contrast between what had happened between him and Saul and what would never happen between him and God. Saul, Saul may have rejected him. The king may have driven him out. The madness of the devil may have separated him from his friend and mentor, but nothing would ever separate him from his shepherd. Amen. Of this, he was supremely confident. That's why he said, surely, surely. yes, surely, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ah, yeah. yeah. oh, the house of the Lord is a place where God's people live. All are invited to live there, but you must accept the invitation. And if you haven't done so, I invite you to come and go with me to my father's house, the divine shepherd. Oh, it's a good house, for there is peace in my father's house. There is joy in my father's house. There is healing in my father's house. There is deliverance in my father's house. There is salvation in my father's house. You'll find everything you need in my father's house. So why don't you come and go with me to my father's house? And once you begin to live in my father's house, you can never be separated from the shepherd. Ah, oh, don't you know, beloved, that nothing can ever separate you and me from God, our divine shepherd. Now, I, I know that there are those who preach and there are those who teach that you can lose your salvation. Perhaps they say you can fall away from God or you can make a terrible mistake and lose everything he has given you in terms of your internal destiny. But to this thinking, I must object. I must strenuously object to that kind of theology. That kind of theology sounds like a mighty weak salvation. It sounds like what Jesus did on Calvary was insufficient. It sounds like to me that God is some sort of cosmic Indian giver taking away what he has promised. And God never goes back on a promise. And remember this and understand this, and this is important. David was no paragon of virtue. He fell down many times in life. He laid with Bathsheba. He murdered Uriah. He was a terrible father, but God never stopped being his shepherd and he will never stop being your shepherd. No matter how much you have failed. Jesus said, all that the father giveth me shall come to me. And he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Paul said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Good God Almighty. No wonder David felt so confident about his future. And so do I. Oh, I might stumble. I might fall down from time to time more than I'd like, but nothing can separate me from my shepherd. From time to time, I might doubt him. From time to time, I might fight with him. From time to time, I might get angry with him, but nothing can ever separate me from my shepherd. I feel just like David. The Lord is my shepherd. Of this, I have no doubt. That's why the songwriter wrote, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, 
purchased of God, born of his spirit. I've been washed, not merely scrubbed, but I've been washed in his blood. Beloved, there are many things in life we are not sure of. We don't know when the virus will be defeated. We don't know when the economy will get back on track. We don't know if America will address the sin of racism and bigotry in a legitimate way. We don't know who will win the election in November. Many things we are not sure of, but I am assured of this one thing. I am sure that if you do right, right will follow after you. And no matter what happens, no matter what comes your way, no matter what the devil throws at you, no matter what happens, God, you will never be separated from the shepherd. Oh, the song says in shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. Where the water's cool flow bathes the weary one's feet, God leads his dear, his dear children along. Some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. That's what the Lord, our shepherd, will do. Yes, he will. And in these difficult hours, in these times of uncertainty, in these times of potential catastrophe, okay. over 40,000 infections a day, we have failed to exercise the unity and the discipline to get this monster under control. We have turned, in to, turned it into a political game. And until we start to learn to love one another, to support one another, to help one another, and to follow the shepherd and not some political leader, we will not survive. So I pray today that we will resolve in our heart not to follow a president or any man, but to follow the shepherd. Let us pray. Lord, there is plenty of fire, plenty of flood, plenty of sorrow in our world and in our own personal lives. The uncertainty of tomorrow is overwhelming, almost suffocating. That's why we need the shepherd. And although tomorrow is uncertain, we know that we will be all right because the Lord, our shepherd, is with us. And because he is, we know that in the end, just like David, we're going to win. In Jesus' name. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest Rule and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Be safe and follow the shepherd.